Okay, so um, I'm at the remote computer accessing the Pentium MMX with Linux and Scratch 1.0 build. And as you can see, we've just tested the kernel in the previous video. And on the right, um, I've done a listing of the sources directory so you can see that I've downloaded all the required um, packages to build Linux from scratch 1.0. Plus, there's an extra uh, directory there with the additional programs that I'll build just to get the GUI up as per the original book. So let's move on. And the next section is all about building the tools required for building and installing the GNU C library. And what happens here is that all of these tools are built um, statically, so there's no reliance on any shared libraries at all. And rather than installing these packages, individual commands are copied into the Linux from scratch um, partition. So this kind this chapter kind of relates to the preparation that's made leading up to chapter eight in the current books. Um, that's probably the best way of um, describing it because everything's built statically. It's in preparation, and all these tools do get built or sorry rebuilt, um, but using shared libraries, which is kind of what chapter eight is about, building the final system. So this is still the preparation for building the final system. These programs are not the programs that be used in the final system. They're just part of the um, uh, requirements for building that final system. And they're fairly straightforward. They generally involve um, configuring, building with this LD flags, dash static, and then copying a binary or several binaries to either user bin or sbin or bin or just sbin off the root. Um, one thing you will notice is some packages may not seem familiar to you if you've not been around um, Linux for that long. Um, in particular, things like shell utils, I think file utils, uh, of all, and I think there was another one. Yeah, I think it's just text utils. Um, they all got merged into what is now known as core utils. Um, I think a few years after um, this book was written, so they might might be unrecognisable, but you'll certainly recognise the binaries that are, are in there that get copied. Um, others you'll see they are instantly recognisable. They've been around for decades. Tar and Gzip being two examples. Um, what now? One thing: there are a few weird things that happen during this, and there's even one been documented here where we have to go and actually modify the source to get it to compile correctly. Um, another thing I noticed when I was um, testing this myself is that it seems when we come to do the later packages that certain binaries are missing. So they're not actually listed in on this page. So I've got to try and remember to check my notes each time we install something to see if there are actually extra binaries. Um, they either, the binaries that are missing either caused programs to not compile or install later on, or there are warnings issued saying that a certain program was missing, um, which to me indicated that maybe something else might be missing because that functionality wasn't there. So um, I've made a note of these, like I say, and I'll try and remember to point them out um, so that you know that if, if you're following this, that you can uh, copy, them, copy them too. So if I go quiet for a second or two, it is because I'm reading my notes just to check um, what I need to do, which is what I'm just doing now. Um, to see which the first one will be. So the first few packages it looks like we can just um, build them as they are. So let's start off. So I'm back in the SUSE Linux um, environment. Obviously we haven't got enough. If, if you remember, it was just basically the kernel. In fact, um, one thing I've got to mention in the previous video, I did mention that it was purely the kernel, the um, init program, sysv init, and the bash prompt were the only things that are running. Uh, I should have really mentioned there's the um, 
bootloader as well, which is Lilo. Although we haven't built that, installed that, we're using the SUS version. That's obviously a f- another part of getting a working system that is to have the bootloader work to actually initiate the loading of the various layers to get to the final um, stage where we have a prompt. So just a little correction there. Uh, okay, so let's start by compiling make. So again, Zcat, because these early tars don't understand how to um, deal with compressed um, archives. They only understand the actual tar archive. Um, so the first one we're doing is make. Now we can pipe it into tar. Change into it, run configure. And as I said uh, in the previous video, I have to prefix all these commands with a full stop and forward slash because the current directory is not recommended to be part of the path anymore as it did used to be around that time. Or I don't know if it was a recommendation, but it was certainly, um, fashionable is the wrong word, but it was certainly the done thing at the time. So generally these programs only take a minute or two um let's unset that now I've set that um yeah generally generally they only take a minute or two so although this is a by modern standards an extremely slow machine it was very fast at its in its time um the tools the programs are a lot simpler um, so they don't take as long as you think they take. Um, there's only certain packages that do take a bit of a time. For example, GCC I think takes just over an hour and um, I think GLibc takes nearly an hour. So they're the two to look out for. Perl, I can't remember how long Perl takes. That might be about half an hour. But the rest of them, as you can see this one, you know, there's probably less than a minute that took. So again, we don't make install with any of these. We copy them to specific locations so we just um, if I do a listing you can see there is the make program we just created and it's um, again quite large it's 1.2 meg large for the era of this software that is um, I don't know what the one that's installed oops, on Suze's let's see where it is So you can see it's only 112 kilobytes there. So the one we've just created, and it's roughly the same version, is, um, what was that, about 1.1 megabytes bigger. It's, you know, like 10, 10 times the size. Um, so you can see what building statically does because it has to build all the extra code into the one binary. So it does mean we end up with a, a larger system than um, what we would end up with ultimately. So we're going to copy make and again it's sometimes a little bit difficult to make out what we copy here although I think that is in a different font it doesn't really stand out compared to the other font so I have to be careful what we do here so we copy that to that location we might want to put a V in just so we get an output during the copy um, another thing I tend to do is just to press tab there to make sure that $LFS is expands not only that it expands which means that it's been set but also it expands to the correct location and we haven't misspelled or any, anything so that's make done so if we were to boot linux from scratch 1.0 now we'd have the binary make and we could run it so assuming we, we could write a, um, a make file which we couldn't because there's no editor there we could use maybe cats to redirect the keyboard to a file but um, make would work now if we rebooted we could use it so that's make done we now move on to said uh, xp and again we do a configure first
and once again we build using make LD flags static. And then we copy said said. So the said binary is in a subdirectory called said. And we copy that to user dot uh, slash user slash bin. And that's done. So next we've got shell utils. Now some of these packages don't share the same package names as the title so shell utils is actually called sh utils so you can see there it is there and this is the first package where i need to copy a couple of extra binaries that aren't mentioned in the book um, to ensure some of the packages later on work i think one in particular that um, i had a lot of trouble with was gcc trying to get that working realizing there was binaries that weren't available So we'll change into that. Again, we run configure. Okay, that's configured. Let's now build the package. Okay, that's done. So now we've got to copy the following binaries from the source directory. So if we look in the source, there's all those binaries there, but we only copy some of them. And therein lies the problem I had. As I say, I found that other binaries are actually needed. So let's copy these ones that are mentioned first of all, which are these ones. Copy all of them to the bin directory of our Linux from scratch partition and the extra ones that I needed to or found that were needed that didn't exist were env and 
uh, EXPR. So it's those two there, ENV and EXPR. So they get copied to user bin, the looks of it. Um, and I think I've copied them there because that's where they are on Sue's. I didn't know what, what was the best place to put them. So um, I guess it doesn't really matter as long as it's in the path in the um, Linux from scratch partition. So they're now there. So hopefully we won't have any other problems with those. And then finally we copy the following binary from the source directory to LFS S bin so CP let's do minus V again truth to LFS S bin so that's show utils done okay next one's file utils And again, there's a couple of extra packages we've got to deal with with this one. Oh, a couple of extra issues. Um, be careful with the file utils. It's easy to mistype and think of find utils. They're quite, quite similar. Um, there's only two letters, basically, that discriminates the two. So in short, you've got the right one. So unpack it, configure the package by running configure again. So now we build it. Okay, that's done. So now we copy the following binaries to LFS bin. So let's grab all of them. And they go to LFS bin. Okay, so here again is another discrepancy with the book. It, it actually doesn't tell us where they come from. So if we look, you can see there's no binaries there to speak of. Of certainly not those ones listed but there is a source directory so if we go in there we can see that those files are actually in this directory here so I'll recall com the command run it and I can see there's no errors there so all those files have been copied that are required um, one extra file that's needed is MV so move is required by something um, I can't remember which package it was, but that was missing and it caused a warning or a, an error, I can't remember what. So let's copy that one as well. Um, now we need to copy g install to 
LFS user bin and rename that file to user bin install. Now again, I found um, at least one package that wanted to use G install. Um, so what I did in the end, I copied the file G install to install to create two copies of the file, but that's probably a bit wasteful in terms of um, this space. Um, it's probably better to create a sim link to G install. So something like ln minus SV um, install G install, if I can remember if that's the right way around to do it. No, it isn't. So G install to install. Yes, yeah, the source to the target. That's right. So if I do ls minus L, you can see that we've got now a link install that points to G install. So if a program wants either of these, it's got access basically to G install. Oh, didn't I change the directory? I didn't change the directory, so I've basically copied that sim link. I'll create that sim link in the source directory. So let's try copying it to user bin. I thought I'd change directory to that. And also I hadn't. Uh, user bin. Okay, what that's done is actually copied the binary. Let's try again. Push. Oh, I didn't do the D. Is that what I didn't do? Yes. Right, so let's remove install and just recall that link command. That's my cell. That's better. So that should be file utils done now. So next we've got util Linux. Can we start off with configure? Okay, right, yes, I forgot about this one. Just check my notes again, should have checked beforehand. There is no configure script here, so I'm presuming that an older version was used um, when this text was written, which, which did have a configure script. So what I did was just carry on. Uh, you can see we've got a make file there already. Um, what I did was just run the make command straight away. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one here. It's not that one, is it? Let's start again. Right, so this one we just run make for the looks of it. Go to the lib directory and compile the files there by running make. All right, so um, as you can see, there's no config there. So we go to lib, we run make. That's done. Then go to the mount directory and compile the programs there by running this. Okay, and then we copy several programs that we've just compiled to LFS SBIN. And then finally, we create a sim link that links swap off to swap on. So if we have a look at LFS slash SBIN, 
you can see we've got a swap on but there's no swap off and by creating a link called swap off to swap on that effectively creates the swap off um, program so ln minus sv will link swap on to lfs sbin swap off that's done And there it is there, swap off points to swap on. So that's util Linux done. And now we move on to text utils. And start by running configure Okay, let's build it. Okay, so that has finished. Um, so we need to copy cat to LFS bin from the source directory. So cp minus v source forward slash cat. And we copy that to dollar LFS bin. That's okay. And then copy the following binaries from the source directory. So it's probably easier to change the source actually. CP minus V. And they get copied to $LFS user bin. So that looks like that's all copied correctly. There's no additional files so that's that one complete and now we move on to tar
configure the package by running configure. and we'll build the package. Okay, that's done. So what we need to do here, it says there's two binaries, TAR and RMT. Uh, I would have thought extremely unlikely that anybody would have needed RMT. Um, tape drives used to be extremely expensive, and probably still are. So really all we need to deal with is the TAR binary. So copy it into LFS bin and that's all we need to do for that one gzip so again configure to start the configuration and build it with the usual make LD flags equals dash static okay so we've got this error that's actually mentioned in the manual about conflicting types for base name and it says how to fix it so we need to edit the gzip.h file and find the line extern char etc so what i found is the quickest thing to do is just look for star base and there it is there it says extern char star base name capital o f brackets brackets char star f name close bracket bracket and semicolon and it says replace this line with and it gives the whole line again and the only difference is that a two has been inserted there to give it a different name save that and then we edit the util.c file and a similar thing if we look for star base there it is there although it's over um, two lines this time and it explains how you can change that if you want to um, it's probably not worth it really um, it just basically again you just insert two so you're just creating a new variable name or object name or something um, called base name two instead of base name so there's no conflict with the existing one that is obviously known about previously so save this then it says rerun the make 
LD flags is static it equals static again and it should carry on where it failed and complete successfully and it tries to explain what was wrong there um, it says like there's a something else already called base names the collision of names um, but the main thing is with that fix it's um, compiled through to completion so remove the following files remove from the following files the in extension so we need to move gzexe dot in to just gzexe move zdiff in to zdiff but if copy these in case any spelling mistakes are made and rename zforce zgrep zmore and Z new then copy the following file so amongst these are the ones we've just renamed to dollar LFS bin so CP minus V to dollar LFS slash bin So that's all okay. So that's gzip done. So moving to bin utils. So unpack it, we're done. Configure the package running configure again. Okay, that's configured. So we've got to make command that's slightly different to all the others we've done so far. In that we pass in all static to LD flags instead of just static. So I think this took between five and ten minutes to compile when you to a slightly bigger package.
Okay, that's done. So it's just under five minutes, which is quite reasonable. So next we've got to copy the following binaries from the gas directory to LFS user bin. So let's do CP. Um, gas full slash uh, a as new and gasp new let's do minus v copy them both to user bin Rename those files to LFS user bin AS and user bin gasp. Okay, so it's probably simpler just just push the directory to um, LFS user bin. So it's AS new that one there. So MV. AS new to AS and MV the other one was gasp new that one there to gasp that's okay so let's go back Copy the following binaries from the LD directory, LD new, so MV LD slash LD dash new, and rename that file to user, LFS user bin LD. Okay, so we could move this and copy it, uh, rename it in one hit, like that. It's okay. Copy the following binaries to the bin from the bin utils directory to LFS user bin. So let's go into that be easiest. Copy these binaries. To LFS user bin. You can see how there's a pause between each one of them, so they're going to be quite a size, each one of those. And rename NM new and strip new. So let's again do a push D to LFS user bin. And we're looking for NM new, which is there. NM new that gets called NM and strip new. You can see that strip new is nearly two gigabytes, uh, two megabytes in size, which is quite big. So strip new and that gets called strip, and that's done. So let's tidy that up. And move on to grep. Once again, we start with configure. and build it with make LD flags.
and then we copy these three binaries from the source directory to LFS user bin super cb minus v and that's done right now I've just noticed while that was building that I've missed out another binary that was part of sh utils so I'm going to have to just remember I've got bison to do next and unfortunately go back and rebuild shell utils to copy this one binary so let's redo that one sh utils tar minus xv luckily it didn't take too long it's just an extra couple of minutes so just go through these motions again so this was um, base name is the one that I forgot to copy and I think it was it was either glibc or gcc I can't remember which one now um, but it just came up with warnings or not warnings just messages saying that it couldn't find base name and I was worried that um, it may have caused either some functionality to be missed or something to not be copied or you know just something not to work correctly so I thought it was quite important that um, it should be there um, even though the install I think it was the install completed successfully the fact that there were these messages saying that it couldn't find this binary I thought well no I'm going back to make sure that's available for it especially on something so important as, as say glibc or gcc they're both important um, I didn't want to let that miss go missing Okay, so let's build it again. Okay, so copy it now, base name from the source directory. And that goes into um, LFS bin as these other ones did. So that's done. So back to Bison and Let's extract it. Oops. So again, run the configure. and compile the package. Oh, 
Okay, now um, we need to copy the Bison program to use a bin in the LFS partition. Oh, I didn't put the Bison name in. So it's not there. It doesn't actually say that it's in the source, but I'm going to assume it's in the source. Yep, there it is there. And that's worked. Now this next command, this LFS user share directory didn't exist. I had to create it, even though it doesn't say anything about that there. So let's have a look to see if it does exist this time around. And no, it doesn't. So if I list the user you can see the share directory is not there so I'm going to have to make it as I did previously so let's do that now and that will allow us to copy again from the source directory uh, source these two files here into that directory we've just created and that's done that's bison so mork next now mork um i can't remember what was on the sue's um sources now what what sue's uses So it looks like it uses Gork. Um, I did look around for Mork and it seemed to be hard to track down a specific version that would be correct to use. So I decided just to go with Gork in the end. Um, although there are differences between the several different Ork versions, there are discrepancies with, with between them. Um, I didn't get any specific problems that I could directly pinned down on using Gork instead of Mork. So I guess uh, maybe how it's used in the building of Linux, Linux from scratch, it doesn't really matter that I use Gork instead of um, Mork. So let me just have a look at uh, Yes, I did download a newer version as well. So, um, yeah, this is going to be newer than the one that Suze is using. So it's using 3.03 and I've sourced 3.04. So let's extract it. Run configure. Now, uh, the make command makes use of C flags, and I don't know if these are appropriate to Gork, the building of Gork or not, but again, I used it, and I didn't seem to um, have any problems that I could attribute to using a slightly different version of Gork. So I'll carry on and do as I did before. So that's done. So I need to copy. Well, it's not going to, obviously not going to be the Mork program. It's going to be Gork. So we copy Gork into LFS user bin. And then we need to create a symlink that ties the Gork binary we've just copied to LFS user bin. Uh, I 
if I've done that the wrong way around again. Oh, I know what it should be. It should read orc. That's what I should be doing. Yeah, that's better. I've actually made a mistake in my notes there. Uh, so LFS user bin. So we should have orc pointing at gork, which we do. So that's fine. And there's the gork binary we've just copied and create or created and copied. Okay, so let's now tidy that one up and move on to find utils again. Be careful you don't get muddled up with file utils, a completely different package. So it's a cat find utils. And we run configure first. Oops. And you'll see that he's using 4.1 find utils, which is the same version that we're using, which is a good indication that we're using correct versions that are expected. Um, and it says that it does get this error again about the base name, but it doesn't stop the build from carrying on. So we need to watch the, uh, to see whether we get that or not. And as I remember, we do or did get it previously. So um, we need to expect to do those changes. And indeed, there it is. Uh, where is it? I just saw it. Yep, there it is there. Conflicting types of base name. So, and there again, C304 of Def's H. So once again, he's got some instructions on how to fix it. So we need to edit the find make file. File, so VI, find make file, and look for the variable C flag. So let's find that. There it is there. And add to it this minus D GNU source. So append that to the end, save that. Then we need to edit the find defs h file. And once again, look for star uh, base. There it is there. Just check it, char space star base name space p underscore char f name. Replace that again, basically changing the base name to be called base name two. Okay, it says read only file here. So let's see why that is first before we do anything. Oops. So you can see it's a read only file. So that's why we get in the morning that it's read only. So we should be able to override that envi. So let's look for that start base again. Insert, we get that warning again. Insert the two. Save the file. It will tell us it's read only, but it tells us we can also, as usual, use the exclamation mark to override that warning. So now if we look at that file again, it's still read only, and if we edit it, look for that star base you can see it has actually written the new file despite the fact that it's um, read only it has overridden it as requested so that's good now we need to uh, edit the find util.c file and again look for the star base signature and it's not there Oh, right, okay, because it's split over two lines. It's just down here, actually. There it is there. So once again, we change base name to base name 2. Again, we're getting the warning about a read-only file. 
it says about the fact that it's on two lines again and it's up to you whether you want to change it so it's on one line it doesn't make any difference just leave it as it is it's probably the safest thing so we'll save that with the override and we'll just look at that again and make sure it's retained it and, and actually overwritten it and yes it has there it is there and we should be able to now rerun the make command again and it should complete properly this time you can see it's carrying on doing other stuff so it didn't actually complete even though it didn't come up with an error at the end and that's done so what we do here is we copy the find program from the find directory there it is there and we put that in LFS user bin and that's done so diff utils Right, I've got some notes about this one. Yeah, we've got an extra file to copy on this one as well. So once again, we'll do a configure to build it. And we'll just start the configuration the build we use that command to actually build it and then we need to copy these three files to LFS user bin and the extra file that I found was needed as well by another package later on was the CMP binary that one there so that gets copied to user bin as well and that's diff utils done next we've got ld.so And this one, um, when you extract it, it's, oh yes, actually there's several things I need to mention here. Um, this I could only find available on an old copy of Red Hat. Um, so it comes down as an RPM file. Um, let's do grep ld dot or ld urls uh, oh that's interesting have i found another version right let me just take a quick look at this site because I thought this was in a different format. Right, yes, I think I've probably found another copy of it somewhere. Um, LD.SO Oh yes, it is available there. Yeah, okay. What it means is, um, I don't know if you remember, initially we installed a tool called Alien and that was to convert the RPM into a tar.gz file. But that URL there does actually give you a tar.gz file straight out without having to use Alien. So um, we're not going to be using Alien in the end to convert it. Um, I've also got the fact that it looks like that might, or the original might not have extracted to its own directory. So I'm going to make an LDSO directory, change into it, uh, 
and extract it there just in case it does actually swamp that sources folder. Okay, no, that version does. So it behaves as normal, so that's all right. So we don't actually need this separate LDSO directory. We can just extract it as per normal. Okay, I'll remove that from my notes. As that's obviously redundant now. Right, so unpack it, go to the util directory, run make LDD, and run make LD config, copy LDD to LFS bin. And copy LD config to LFS S bin, and that's all we need to do for that one. So now we move on to Perl. Perl's got a bit of an annoying configuration um, in that there's no instructions here for accepting the defaults because we we don't want the defaults with got to coerce Perl into compiling statically. So we do have to answer some of the questions um, going against the defaults. Uh, oops, don't want to list that to the screen. I want to put it through tar. the package by running configure and it looks like it's configured with a capital C there and it says you can stick to all the default questions except for the following when asked what is the file extension for the shared libraries so we need to answer none so let's press enter until we get to that question And there it is. What is the file extension used for shared libraries? SO. We want to answer none. And the next question we want to look for is any additional LD flags not including libraries and then brackets minus L user local lib. So let's have a look at that one. Is that it there? Any additional fla LD flags not including libraries? So we need to answer with that library path that's been supplied plus the static switch and the last question we need to look for is do you wish to use dynamic loading yes and we've got the answer no do you wish to use dynamic loading yes so we answer no or n and then we can just carry on pressing enter for the remaining questions And at this point, it does lots of checks again. You think it's finished with all the questions, but it does come back and ask some more. So it's a little, little bit tedious, but not, not too onerous.
Okay, so there's the next question. Again, just keep pressing enter um, until it's done with the questions, done with the configuring, and we get the um, prompt back. Okay, so the configuration is done. Let's now run make to build it.
Okay, that's interesting because when I compiled this first time, it didn't compile correctly, and I had to add to the configure command disable NLS to get this to work. Um, it seems that this time it's worked for some reason, so I've obviously done something differently this time. Um, but if yours does fail, then that's what you'll need to do. Um, and it didn't seem to cause a problem to anything else. So anyway, that has worked. So all I need to do is to copy, make info, make info to LFS user bin. And that's text info done. So the next one we've got is auto make. And you can see these have got quite a bit of manual work to do, so I'll have to be careful. So unpack it, configure it by running configure. Then we straight away copy two files called auto make and AC local. And we copy them to LFS user bin. Oops, wrong bracket. That's done. Then we create a directory copy the following files to that directory. So CP minus V all of these files get copied to that directory we just created. That looks okay. Then copy all the star.am files to the same directory. That looks okay. Create the following directory. and copy the following files from the M4 directory to the AC local directory. So CP minus V M4 forward slash star M4 to AC local, oops. Yep, and that's done. So that's auto make complete. Now we move on to autoconf. Unpack it, configure it by running configure. Build it with make. And copy the following files to LFS user bin CP minus V to dollar LFS user bin. It's okay. Create the following directory. And copy the following files to LFS share autoconf all the star.m4 star files. So cp minus v star.m4 star into that directory we've just created. Okay. Also copy these following files to autoconf. So these ones here. Into that autoconf directory and that looks like that's it.